when I did this training back two years ago, I honestly wasn't even really trying to make a thing out of it. Okay. It's almost like I couldn't help but think about the way I was having these conversations with potentials, how I was reacting and responding and what, you know, everyone else was doing on the team. Right. So it's so important. I think communication and conversations is almost like the only thing you got to make sure you, you make it work in, especially in network marketing. Okay. Um, and we start questioning ourselves when things don't go our way, we're result driven, you know, like we're, it's, it's in our human nature. So when some things don't work out the way we hoped it would, you know, we just kind of start questioning things. So I'm going to list a couple rules out like I did in my first training. And I think these, and I'm going to give some examples of some conversations that how I approach things and, and my rationale behind it. And I hope that you guys find it helpful today. So I will repeat one thing from my, from 1.0. Okay. Which is, I think the most important thing, but let's start. So rule number one, my first date. Okay. If you're just getting started in this business, think of it as it's like you never had a boyfriend. Okay. Or a girlfriend. No first date, no first kiss. You are fresh on the market. You're ready to date. You went on a couple dates. You're putting in the work. You are feeling it all. Okay. A couple days later, maybe a couple weeks later, you're in your head because you haven't heard back from this person you wanted to date with. No one's asking you on second dates, but let me ask you guys this. Did you tell anyone about these dates? The conversations you're having? No right? Because you thought, well, I think I know how to get, how the game works. I don't want to bother my friends about this said nobody ever. Okay. I don't even know. Like, I feel like I'm updating my friends on my life when I tell them about anyone I'm dating or anybody that I like. Uh, so I want to know when you're doing a three way call. Okay. I want to see screenshots from day one. Tell me what they said or reply to your story. If you know what you want to say back even better. Okay. Tell me what you're saying back. So right there and then we can begin to improve our conversations in the long run. Okay. Quick general tips. We don't want to deal our best card on the first hand. Okay. We don't need to overcompensate and come off too eager to please somebody else ever. Anybody, not even just dating right? Going into so much detail. No one is attracted to that and it, it will lessen a man's respect. Okay. Most men don't perceive a woman who jumps through all the hoops. I'm sure you guys can agree with me, right? They like the chase. And how many times I feel like I hear girls, I say it and I'm like, oh, I don't know. He just, he likes me. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I like him. What a pathetic way of thinking, but it's, it's true. It's just, it's what we do. So don't think I'm only MMP or I'm only MMB. I'm not enough. I'll just bow down to whatever. The dream girl thinks I'm as best as it gets. Take it or leave it. That's the attitude that you guys have to have. It doesn't mean that we want to be rude or disrespectful in any way. It just, it's you're knowing your value, right? We want to act like the prize in our conversations. You'll turn them into a believer when you start acting like the prize. You are the gift and you're the mystery, right? Think of unwrapping a gift, okay? Every one of you, you've unwrapped a gift before. The exciting part is the unwrapping. Would you give anybody a gift without the box or anything wrapped? No, because you want them to be excited. You want them to unwrap and see like, guess what it is? There's a difference between honest, like being honest and, and disclosure, right? You can be honest, but you don't need to reveal the world when you're having a conversation with somebody. Um, I feel like I've been hearing this on calls a lot. And this is, again, refers back to conversations to uh, conversations too. use the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Everything needs to be simple. When somebody asks me, what do you do for work? How often we get that question, right? I work with a luxury beauty brand company promoting the business or the products, AKA social selling. The fact that we can make money from our phones these days just blows my mind still. Are you looking for a second gig? Also, how the hell have you been? Maybe it's someone I haven't talked to in so long. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to get into, 
Oh my God, girl, I work with my mate. You heard of them. I'm sure you've seen my post, but it's so fun. I love, love, love it. Products are paraben, all of this vegan, slow down, okay? You get the idea. So I'm gonna move on from rule number one, but this is something that we all need a reminder of. Sometimes, honestly, it doesn't matter if you're, like I said, starting out in the beginning of this business or not. Sometimes we're like, oh my God, I feel like I haven't done this conversation in a while. Did I just overdo it? Just slow it down. Okay, rule number two, so many fish in the sea, okay? Sometimes we really like, we really like someone, okay? Eventually, like that's what we want. That's the outcome. We want to actually like somebody. We want to be able to capable of, like, we want to be capable of liking somebody. Then for some time period, maybe it's retrograde. Maybe he's busy. Maybe the signs are, I don't know. But you're not getting the attention you received when you first started talking, okay? It happens all the time. I just went through this and this is like why it's awesome in this training. So like a potential can seem so interested and can pull back easily. That happens to us, right? Other things come up, distractions. Somehow this just takes over our mood. You're all hot and bothered. You start overthinking. Is it me? Is it something I said? I suck at dating. I hate everyone. Creating scenarios in our heads. Why do we torture ourselves like that? Because you think some guy or girl is acting different according to you, but are they really? Don't be dramatic, okay? You know what I think? If you have more time to overthink about anything, then you should have no problem to overwork. You are not using your time wisely, okay? But seriously, did you join this business because you wanted to work with this one person? No, we have so many platforms to connect with thousands of people every day. Why are we obsessing over one when we should be making new connections daily anyways, right? That to me says you're not making 20 new connections every day. Guys, dating life is so different now than it was 20 years ago, right? We have dating apps just like network marketing. It's different. You don't have to go from door to door. The internet is yours to take over. Instead of spending time worrying about someone who's not pulling the trigger, spend the time on yourself, on your business, on learning and growing and on other potentials. It's not about you being worthy or not. Time is money. Spend it wisely. Okay. So that's what I want you guys to think about. I want you to think, oh my God, why am I obsessing over this one person? I should have been talking to multiple people. Then I'm not upset. I'm so busy. I don't even know. Like, oh my God, he didn't write me back. Oh, doesn't matter. Don't remember. Rule number three, the busy bee. Okay. Speaking of time, where are my busy girls at? Anybody on this call? If you ever pull the busy card, this is for you. Or you're probably not on this call because you're too busy. Um, or probably single, you know, because you're too busy. Anyways, being honest with yourself will be the first step. Okay. We make time for the things we want to make time for just like a relationship. And we know relationships take time to build. When I lived in New York city, I used to say, I'm just so busy, right? Don't get me wrong. Brittany and I would text each other like 8 PM, 9 PM. Did you leave for work yet? We're working your asses off. Da -da 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 -da. I thought at the time I wanted a boyfriend but I was choosing to work. I was grinding for my multiple side hustles. My Nate was one of them with my full-time job, but I also know that busy is a decision, okay? So don't let your mind trick you into thinking otherwise. We have to stop saying we wanna make this business work then say our schedule is busy. It's like when couples don't break up because they are in denial and you wish they would just break it off already, but instead they're too afraid to leave the other person, but also too weak to put in more effort. So instead they would just prefer to stay in limbo. Instead in this business, we lie to ourselves and say we're busy when really in reality, we're just not making time for it, period. That's why you're not where you want to be, period. No other reason, not your upline, not the trainings that are lacking for you in your back office on your training pages, not the, your network, not anything. When people want to make something work and they make time for it, period. So ask yourself, am I fighting to make this relationship work with money? 
And when you know the answer, I want you guys to break up with your damn excuses, okay? These are bad habits. Regardless of monate or not, in anything we do in life, if we want to make something work, if you want to get promoted in your corporate job, if you want to freaking, you know, I, I don't know, save money by this date, save like whatever it is, you've got to break up with the excuses and get to planning. Speaking of busy, you know what men like when we're unattainable, okay? You get asked out, but you're not in the mood or you missed their phone call or you weren't available the first time they asked you out you just became that much more valuable for them, okay? Because your world doesn't revol revolve around them. So think about that with potentials. When I reach out to my potentials or when I follow up, I make it known I'm a busy girl. But like, you know, hear me out. Like I will say, oh my God, Karen, I've been meaning to message you, but I keep forgetting because life, how the hell are you? Maybe that's how I'm reaching out. Or Oh man, where does the time go? I swear, I can't keep up with my days lately. Did you get to watch the video? Maybe I already follow up three times before and they never answered. I'm not gonna stop. That just isn't gonna make me stop, right? Also, a potential told you that they would get on the phone tonight at 6 p.m. but canceled last minute. If this was a guy, I wanna know how you guys would treat it. I really wanna know. I want you guys to throw in A or B in the chat for me. A, I would play it all cool and say, let's reschedule knowing I got backup for my backup and 100% move them down on my priority list. B, or play it cool, but be too available. No worries, I can basically do whenever. Can you do at this time, this day? Let me make this clear. I don't want you guys to be unavailable, okay? I want you guys to just um, have higher, like higher your standards and shift your focus on juggling multiple men, not just one. But I want to know, are you A or B? Okay. I'm A. I'm A. I want to know, like, it's all good. I'm going to play it cool. But at the same time, I am not going to make this one person constantly. How many times have you guys had somebody constantly reschedule? And I'm like, oh my God, just tell me that you're not interested. But then you, they message you one more time. They like reel you back in just like men do. I feel like they all have like a little radar and when, we, when we're just moving on, they're like, oh, let me just come right back in. That's what some of our potentials do. So A is what I have learned to do in this business. I make sure that I am prioritizing, that there's other people that I'm talking to. So I make sure that this person isn't gonna just have all of my availability. What I would say back is all good. I get it. I've had the most insane day too, so that actually works. We can make it work another day. What's your day like this Thursday? That's all I would say. If they don't respond, again, I'm not gonna obsess over it and get on the phone with my upline and be like, well, I have this one girl that we're supposed to get on the phone and then I have this other girl. No, I should have like, hundreds of people that I'm getting on the phone with. I should have at least four to five people I'm trying to get on the phone with weekly, right? So as for my online daters, this is for those who live behind their phones. Here is another thing, okay? Connection is a connection, but it's 10 times stronger when you meet them in person. Fact. Meet your people in person. Invite them over for wine night. Invite them over, period. Don't know what to say? Watch the trainings in our back office. You, you, you're just getting started and you don't know how to approach it. If they come over in person, call your upline and ask for guidance before you do it. That's what I want you guys to do in the first place. Like that's what we want to start building. I don't want you to rely on anybody. Don't get me wrong when I ask, when I'm talking about screenshots and guidance, but if you want to make sure that you're doing things the right way, starting out, that's what we want to do. Those are the steps we want to take. Rule number four, confidence, okay? If you go into, and you guys have heard this before, if you go into anything thinking it's going to suck, it probably will. Going into your first day thinking, oh, this is gonna be awkward. No, Karen, you're awkward. Who in here can remember the first time you really went on a date? Your first kiss with someone you like. It's nerve wracking, but you hoped it went well, right? That they're a good kisser. 
I don't message people about the business thinking, oh, what if she sucks? That's such a crazy mentality to me. There's a first for everything. If you're just starting out, any first approach, conversation, date, I don't care you're nervous to go on the date. Do you want a boyfriend? Do you want to sign market partners? Go drink a glass of wine before and chill out. Don't mix being nervous with zero confidence, okay? Two different things. Being nervous, being excited is, a, is an okay feeling, but don't kill your confidence and think things are going to suck because you're just really already lowering the bar as you are going on this date, okay? And not all first dates are great. Sometimes I think, damn, I dodged a bullet on that one but glad I went on this date because what a story that made. I learned this. I learned that. No one is born a pro at anything, at anything, okay? No matter the skill, one way or another, in order to be great at anything, we need to accept being a pro comes with previous, mis like learning from our previous mistakes. Every relationship you had in the past taught you something, just like in this business. All you guys need to realize is you got to learn from it. Listen to people who want to see you succeed. I'm so, I'm very stern about failure because I want our team to be ready to get back up. Like your first relationship may not work out. Your first potential call may not work out. You might cry a little bit. It stinks, but get over it because every successful relationship like a business will have its growing pains. So we need to make sure that we're growing confidence in our relationship with Mane. I get it, okay? When we first started out working in this business, some of us have a hard time being confident sharing about our business. It's exactly like when you first talk about a new relationship you're in. That's what I think, okay? Think about it. In the beginning, and you guys can agree and disagree with me, but in the beginning um, of a relationship, I'm not really pushing anyone's buttons as often. I like to, you know, pick, pick at the person that I'm dating, but you know, I'm a little hesitant. I'm not like pushing it too far. I also think I, I like, I always like them more in the beginning than I, then I'm like, haha, I own you. A year later, it's like, okay, hey, Justin, you really need to come up with better jokes because that one sucked. I would have never said that a year ago. I just, I'm confident in my relationship. I can say whatever and tease him and he can do the same, right? Your thinking strategy is different because your mind is basing it off of your experience with that person. If you saw a girl's name on their phone three months in versus two years in, different reactions, right? You wouldn't sweat it for one second two years later because the trust is there because you, you have a confident relationship. You're confident in your relationship. Like I dare him to do something wrong. Bye. That's how you guys need to be in your business. Confidence is everything. Sometimes I feel like smarter child when people come to me with objections. Like you guys remember smarter child? I don't mean I'm robotic. I'm just saying I am literally numb to, you know, we, we have a shield that we, we start building when we get hurt the first time and the second time and the third time. And that shield is the same kind of in this business. When people like, you know, said something to me two and a half years ago, oh, is this like a pyramid? Oh, is this this? I was like, oh my God, what am I going to say back? No, it's not. But how do I, how do I defend it? Now I'm like, um, okay, this is in for you. That's cool. I'm like, all good. I mean, you're not crazy for feeling this way. I said the same thing. What about make, what about this? That makes it feel like it's not for you. It doesn't even phase me. I'm not upset. It's not going to ruin my day. We need, so we need to teach ourselves how to not let the basics phase us and remember our own value, just like we would in a relationship, right? Okay. Rule number five. This actually is something that I recently uh, had somebody tell me something that made me really think of this because this is honestly, this exists. And so I actually really want to know like if any one of you feel this way. Some of us come into this business, rule number five is the yes man, okay? Some of us come into this business with a frat boy attitude. What do I mean by that? You're either single, enjoying the mingle, or you're so over it and you're ready to settle down, okay? So say you just signed up for the business, you're unsure if you're ready to commit. And listen, that's fine. I didn't at first either. We're all different. But some of us come into this business like a frat boy. You're used to prospects coming to you. You had no problem getting anything anyone you wanted prior. Honestly, yes was probably the first word you learned when you were a baby. 
okay? You're a serial dater. Maybe you were in sales before and you were at the top of the company. You were the decision maker. You didn't wait for the decision to be made. But then you got your first no in this business and you can't comprehend, like you just don't understand why. Then we blame the business. Mm, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's for me. This is just stupid. I don't know. I just feel like my network isn't the right network. I feel like I joined too late. Cry me a river. Okay. You're making all the excuses. All right. It doesn't like nothing in life is going to keep working out for you one way or another. You got to learn either when you were younger or when you were later on in life, doesn't matter. This is a complete different business strategy that you have to treat it differently. Even the coolest frat dude will have to put in the work for the one period. Okay. So the sooner we accept that, the sooner you guys are going to start, like the sooner we accept that we have to start from the bottom and learn, the sooner you will see yourself level up in this business. Okay. Now, once you're ready to commit, rule number six, set the date. So recently someone asked me, what was it for you that flipped the switch? Okay. And I know some of my girls have heard this before, um, but I was managing market builder. Okay. I was MMB. I went on this trip, came back and I was just in the same office, same bullshit, different desires. I was like, I don't know if I can be here anymore. First thing I did was I went to my girlfriend, Bianca, and I said, okay, listen, you and I are both in the same place at the same time with our current jobs. We both need to break up with corporate. We deserve to be happy and free. Once I got her to dream with me, I started thinking, okay, all right, I got a plan. I got to set a date. We wanted to travel more. So I was like teaching myself these programs to edit a video so I can inspire other people to travel. Then I was thinking, all right, this is in April, May. I'm thinking August is when my lease is up. So I decided I'll move my things in storage once I'm once out of my lease. Okay. Stay with friends here and there for two months so I can save money. Guys, I had zero dollars in saved in, in, in May. Okay. Zero. Finally quit my job a month before our first Monate trip, then went to see my family for two months in Turkey. So I was able to even save more money. I was thinking ahead in April, May, when I felt like I had my friend's comfort and she was going to do the same thing with me. I felt like, okay, now I got to start telling people the date when I'm doing this, because not only am I keeping my word to myself, I'm going to make sure that I stick this out. I can't just say this and not commit to it. Okay. A lot of the times what happens? Oh yeah. I really want to make this work. I really want to do this. Man, yeah. I really just feel like I'm doing everything I can, but you're not really right. You're not really committing to your own plan. You're not really telling the world. I'm not someone who likes to manifest, but I will say that I say it out loud. And that means I'm going to follow through. If I have a call scheduled, I'm going to follow through. If I have an opportunity, I'm going to follow through. If I gave you my word, that's what that means to me. So I couldn't fall, uh, like fall down, like fall down. I couldn't just back out on my word that I said that I was going to commit to. Right. So what happened six months later, we traveled, we did all the things. And the more I said it out loud, the more I was willing to make it happen. Um, now this is leading me to the last rule. Okay. Rule number seven. And then I want to do Q and a with you guys, if anybody has any questions, but I want you guys to write our vows tonight. Okay. I wrote a little bit of something. Um, I'm a big word person. Okay. They words stick to me. If you say something to me, I won't forget it. Like if it's something that stuck with me, if I say something out loud, like I said, I got to stick to it. I like to keep my word. It's also how you build trust with your friends and your business partners and, and anything in life. So people say like, I'm going to be faithful. Then they, then they go cheat. Like, okay, so many different scenarios. So tonight I want you guys to really think about your vows to your business because this business with my Nate, it's, it's going to like, whatever you do for my Nate, it's money. It's going to do it back. Right. It's going to meet you halfway. Right. So my vow to you guys, my Nate, for me, this wasn't a love at first sight. I really didn't see you for you till seven months in. However, I knew then I wanted to make it work. 
I knew then it was going to be hard. But I also knew then nothing worth having comes easy. So here is my promise to you. I promise to show up for you every day, even on my hardest days. I promise to be truthful by your side, no matter the reviews, no matter how many no's, no matter what curve ball life throws at me, the ups and downs, I'll wake up thinking of you, I'll go to sleep thinking of you, if I can even sleep. I'm obsessed with you, I wanna be better, do better by my people, let's create the life we always dreamed of. I do, okay? The whole purpose of this training is, guys, want to keep your conversations light, make main, main a sense of humor in your conversations. Like it, it really, I send gifts all the time in my follow-ups. Okay. I have no shame in following up as many times as I want to. I don't care. Value yourself, remain control of your time. You work with your rhythm, not anyone else's, but make the time for those relationships. Some move quickly, some are slower than others, but just always remember to leave them always wanting more, right? Um, but that's all I have. I hope this was helpful. If does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? Let me just catch up. I'm sweating. <laughs> Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask now or, uh, people with ghosting me, I talk about this all the time. I literally, I think I've after, I don't, I don't even think it's a thing. I think three times say I followed up and they didn't answer and then I'll get, play, like I said, I, I like to get like, uh, I like to have fun with it. I'll send a Casper gif and say, okay, well you're too busy Caspering me, but I feel like I've said this on so many calls that my girls are probably like, okay, can you come up with something new? But I just don't think it matters. I think if you don't care about what they think and you value your business and yourself at the end of the day, it doesn't matter uh, if anybody's ghosting you. And like I said, on your priority list, they should be here, not here, right? That's something that you'll do and follow up, but you should be having multiple conversations that that person you, you'll probably eventually forget about. Um, I just wanna make sure. Okay. Um, all right. One more question. How many times do you, uh, um, I don't think there's an amount. I don't think if anybody agrees or disagrees, I don't think there's an amount, but at the same time, how many times would you let a guy cancel on you? You know, like if a guy canceled on me twice, I literally am so turned off. It's like, oh my God, it's, it's gonna, I have to be in the mood to really invest my night to go out and get ready, shower, look good for myself and you and go out. It's going to take a lot. So I'm not saying be unavailable, but I'm also saying, you know, you should be talking to people who are willing to want to make time to talk to you. Um, and how do you talk to potentials if you don't know them? Just like how would you talk to somebody if you met them in line at Starbucks? You know, like you build a relationship, people are different. Like you have to either, some people I build relationships with and I, I'll joke around, like I'll mention this or, or, or I won't. Like you really just kind of test the water, you know? Um, but if it's somebody that I'm close with, I'm gonna treat them differently too. I'm gonna say, I honestly think you're stupid for not doing this. You know, um, perfect example is Kristen. Uh, she was able to scroll back and see how I reached out to her. Guys, I had not seen her for 10 years and I messaged her and said, one, how are you still so pretty? Like, have you not aged? Two, what are you doing for work these days? That's all I said. I couldn't believe how good my reach out was. I was terrible at following through. It took me literally from April till August to get on the phone with her because I'd missed her message. She missed her message. So you just have to be on top of it. See, I didn't prioritize right, right? Like she was making time, I was making time, but then we were both kind of MIA, but I really should have been on top of it. So prioritize your list. Um, and yeah, that's it. I hope this was helpful. And just remember, if you're ever pissed off at a potential, act like it's a guy you like, how would you respond? Um, yeah. All right. Have a good night guys. Love you all and kick ass because this month is amazing with our 199 special. So everyone should be recruiting like
crazy. Okay. Bye.